Attention! Go! So, Helen, I'm seeing a clean start from both crews. What do you think of that as they make it away through the first 10 strokes or so? Yeah, I think it was really interesting because you can see the French crew making a lot of adjust adjustments, twitching quite a lot before they said the go. Not looking the most comfortable, maybe a bit of moving water there. The Australians sat very still, but as they moved off, the French had a lot of power. I think probably trying to stop that twitchiness in the water. Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? You need to be loose as well as powerful. And uh, we got a lot of power in both of these boats. But um, what I always think looks so good is when you can see that control, you can see the bodies moving well together. And the Enfoy brothers getting out here to a half-length lead. Yeah, in the smaller boats compared to the eight, you can get this half-length length lead in, in the first uh, sort of 30 seconds. It's what you can do in the next few minutes is going to count. And it's going to be really telling when they find their rhythm. Yeah, well, this is about the point, do you think, where they'll be looking to find their rhythm? I, we're thinking about a minute or so into the race. I think so, but what I like about the, the pairs event um, is that you can make those decisions and you can decide. So if you were the Australians, you might want to stay on that start speed starting rate a little longer to try and stay in touch. Maybe the French will feel the confidence uh, to find their rhythm a little earlier. So it's, it'll be about the decisions made now. Yeah, well, it's quite interesting as you say that, Helen. They've just taken rates. Both crews still here at 40, so they're both still out there sprinting. To me, that French crew still out there sprinting, trying to get in front, looking to establish themselves this year as the French Coxless pair. The two of them were in the Coxless four in Rio, ended up in 11th place, now going for it as the French pair. I think what would worry me if I was the French pair is that half-length lead was taken out of the start. It was very much in the start phase. In this next phase of the race, they haven't made more of an impact. So they're probably a little reluctant to come down onto rhythm because they don't want their lead to be eaten into. Yeah, I can see that, that you've got to take, take a risk at some stage and come into a pace that looks sustainable. The French, they're still sprinting away. They're still keeping their stroke rate very high. But it is a tailwind on the course. We said we've had these fast times. Tell me the difference about how it feels. Oh, just a second before we do that. Just seeing Richard Phelps there going for his flag, asking the... On Foix brothers to move back towards their Buckinghamshire station. So Helen, tell me what it's like rowing in a tailwind in a pair. What's the difference? Um, to be honest, it's, it's a lot of it is about that movement. Every single time you come around the front end to take the front to take the catch, moving out of it smoothly and quickly, and you're going to be taking more strokes. The rate will be higher to keep yourself bowling along. You're trying to use the tailwind to your advantage to let you almost like a, a snowball effect carry you down the course. So in a way, you're almost getting a little bit more on the front of the stroke and there's not a lot of time really to squeeze out the finish you just get your hands around the back turn and get up to the next yeah, stroke. Yeah exactly the more agile athletes really like the tail and they'll like the fact that a lot of it is about body, body weight and movement and how quickly you can kind of change direction how well you can change the blade. So as we have a look at it the Australian pair to the right the combination of Josh Dunkley Smith and, Smith and Josh Booth both very experienced both in the four in Rio that got silver medals. Dunkley Smith was also in the four in London that got a silver medal both times behind those British pairs. Dunkley Smith's an extremely strong man, extremely powerful on the rowing machine. He's gone under five minutes 40. For anyone who's used a rowing machine, you know what that means. You're holding 125s the entire way. Well, he's done that in the past. He was only the fifth man to do that in world history. So a big, strong man, Josh Dunkley Smith, in the bow seat of the boat on the right, but it's the Enfoy brothers who are still hanging on to that lead, and both these boats still just sprinting down the course. They really are, and you can just see that engine room in the, in the Australian boat. You can see that they're looking strong through the water and using that power per stroke to try and eke into the lead. Neither and that Chris. boat from Australia, look how they've wandered off their lane as well here. Maybe he's pulling a bit too hard, yeah, pulling Josh saying, Booth across the lane. Neither, neither of the crews are going to like rowing this place together. In a pair, you've got one blade on that side, and if you clatter it, if you hit it, that's not going to be nice for either crew. Well, I haven't got the French pair below 40 strokes a minute yet. I've still got them at 41, smashing it down the middle of the course. Richard Phelps having to go for his flag, having to push them across. I don't think they've done too much to encroach yet. As long as they respond, they'll be okay. Look at that wide grip on the stroke man there. Theophile in the stroke seat. If we get another look at that, arms extremely wide apart. Again, being asked to steer back by Richard Phelps. 
Yeah, I really wouldn't feel comfortable if I, if I was in those boats to be that close to feel my blade that close to the puddle. But yeah, it's a very, very wide, wide grip on the stroke there. Really interesting to have your arms that far apart. Generally, we'd say shoulders width apart. You can even see there's the there's the grip on the blade where you're meant to put your hand. He's way down on the carbon fibre. It looks like an exercise. It looks like he's doing a drill mm. as they come down here. They're now about a third, two thirds of the way through the course, about a third left. They're in that quiet spot just before the packed enclosures. And look at them. They're still absolutely gunning it in this French pair. I think that last 10, 20 seconds could have been a difference maker. They just pushed and they're trying to push for clear water now, the French pair. By keeping that rate up in this tailwind, they're managing to bowl along and I think they've moved up to clear water there. It looks like they have got a bit of clear water just when they need it because they've let themselves again wander across. Richard Phelps again going for the flag to steer them across. If I was in that Australian pair, I would definitely put my hand up at the end of the race, whatever happens. I don't think they've done enough to encroach yet, but I'm not an umpire. I'm no coach either, but I'm very excited and excited spectator today. Look at these incredible pictures and seeing this race. The French now with a length of clear water. The Australians got an awful lot to do to come back here, even up those enclosures. Yeah, the Australians will definitely be feeling those puddles there from the from the French. They'll be feeling their blade moving into into water, which is not the most comfortable to row in. Well, the French pair from Verdun in France. The the Australians train in Melbourne on the River Yarra. This year, then, taking time out from the Australian national team programme. Coming here to Henley, and they've come up against a very, very fast French pair. They're still looking good coming down towards the last 15 strokes or so. Yeah, they haven't taken their foot off the gas the whole race, that French crew, and didn't give the Australians a chance to cruise and find their rhythm. There was no cruising in this race. There was no cruising in these conditions. They've shown us how to do it. They've shown you it's a drag race. You've got to row these tailwind conditions well. Still 42 strokes a minute coming down to the fret to the finish line. The French haven't come below 40 the entire way. And here we see them coming up towards the line. And it's a win for the French pair. The Enfoy brothers over Dunkley Smith and Booth of Australia. Only thing to wait for is whether we're going to get a white flag, whether we're going to get any protest. As we take a look now, and I can see it, Richard Phelps has got the white flag in his hand. And confirmation there, a win in the Silver Goblets and Nichols Challenge Cup for the French pair over the Australians. So, Helen, a few final words from you on uh, what it's like to row in a coxless pair and, and what you think of this performance here. I think it's a really interesting performance. I think what the French did here in keeping the rate up is actually, you can see, like you were saying earlier, you don't have a huge finish on the stroke in these conditions because there's no need for it. You're going along with the tailwinds. You need to take more strokes and you take that front end and keep the front end of the boat moving with you. That's right, and that's what they did all the way down the course. See him in the bow seat there, just able to take a little look over his shoulder. Valentin in the bow seat, the little brother. Happy to have won with his big brother, as they describe themselves when we speak to them in interviews. And how pleased they are to win the silver goblets here at Henley.